Hello guys and welcome back to another Tweaker Man video. Today we're going to be showing you how to make a very nice isolation table. So the core material that we're using for this job is 24mm birch ply. Now this is a very nice top of the range birch ply this one, it's really good quality. So um, I've already cut that to size. Um, we need some drill bits, so in this, this instance um, we need a 10 mil wood bit, the bit, you know, the proper wood bit, not a metal bit. Um, we need a sliding bevel square, and these are our inserts. So you can buy these, right, with the uh, yeah. with the spikes already already in a kit, but they get expensive like that. So what I do is I buy the spikes separately, and then I buy a big bag of these, which cost around about five pound fifty. And uh, these are these are very cheap as well. You, you get, I think I get eight in there for about a couple of pounds. So they're really cheap and uh, they really work really well. So um, and you're also going to need a um, a large Allen key to fit to fit the. Uh, there you go. That is a that is an eight mil Allen key there. The drill bit is a ten mil. There you go. So all we've got to do now is we've got to just uh, start marking it out now. Right, okay, so this is the size of the isolation table I've made. It's uh, 460mm wide by, by around about 380 deep. Now you can make these to whatever size you like, but this is the size that I'm making. So, we've got our bit here. You're also going to need a drill, but I've got a pillar drill over there. And I'm going to show you how to do it on the pillar drill. The reason I'm using the pillar drill is because the drill hole will be dead straight. Uh, dead level, dead straight. It won't be going at an angle because you don't really want that to be screwed in at an angle. And when you're using a normal drill, you've got to make sure it's dead straight. So what we do now is we're going to put this on the corner over here. <clears throat> and we want to get that dead centre to where we want it. So we're just going to put a little mark there. So I've already pre-cut this wood and i've sanded it and uh, when when you when you get um when you cut birch ply you always get a bit of chip out so what i do is i i finally feel the chip out on the edge there you can't see it it's gone and and i'm going to be polishing this the same color as the rack that i'm making so these are for the rack that i'm making but today i'm just going to show you how to do this so we've got to get four of these on each corner this is a very uh, reasonably priced and effective isolation. Birch ply is dead quality. It really is good quality. And it helps to uh, absorb vibration and then absorb them into the spikes. You could also put oak cones on these if you wanted. But I I'm uh, going to use spikes instead. So these are going to be the isolation tables that fit on the rack that I'm about to do a video on very soon. Um... I'll show you something else I've been doing as well. If you pan the camera around to to here, this is the uh, one of the units here that I've been uh, that I stripped and redone of my uncle's. Um, the inside's all going to be braced up with oak as well, which are um, oak balustrades like this, which are very nice and strong. So everything's going to be really rigid and strong. And then these are going to have isolation tables on the top of those as well so now we've cut out we've um, we've marked all our corners out now now we're going to head over to the uh the uh the pillar drill in a minute but what i want to show you first is uh enable to not drill down too far we need a bit of masking tape now i can set it on that on the pillar drill but i'm going to show you how to do it this way because it's probably easier if you haven't got a pillar drill well, a lot of you probably wouldn't have one but so we need to just offer that up to there and we want to mark it so we don't drill down too far because you don't want to go straight away through I always like using a brand new drill bit and these are very sharp and the problem is is they're going to um, go straight away through if I'm not careful especially if you're using a hand drill and you're putting pressure on it with the pillar drill it won't do it so when you come down to the side here you can see it's only going to go so far it won't go right the way down it's going to go only to there right so let's head over to the pillar drill so i'm putting the uh the drill bit into the 
I never bother using a uh, an Allen uh, a chuck key. I tend to just do it like that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring our piece of uh, birch ply. We're going to turn the pillar drill on. There we go. And we're keeping that dead flat. We're going to try to get it nice and centered. This is the hardest bit now. We want to make them exactly the same. We want to centralise them all. There we go. We want to go down just to that point there. We'll go slightly a bit further if you wanted, but just to make sure that the... Uh... So there's one hole. There's one hole there. So we're just going to do the same to the others. What I like about these wood bits is there's a point on the end so you can get them spot on when you're drilling down. That's the second one. Third one. Right, one more. So here we have our inserts now. Eight mil inserts. Well, the center is an eight mil insert. Um, so then you have, we have to start off by by getting that dead level in there and we twist that on. Now you could put a slight bit of PVA around here at the same time if you wanted because what I find is good about that is, is it acts as a nut lock slightly because you don't want it to come undone at all. So we just push some PVA around there at the same time and it will dry into the wood. You may find with this uh, birch pliers it may split out a little bit again um see there's a bit splitting out just there you see so i'll have to do a little bit of filling afterwards on that i'll just go around a bit more with that let's right, see where flat that is right that's pretty flat now so we've got some bits that have fallen off of there which i, I shall fill afterwards because it, it, it's quite brittle in a way this uh this um birch ply right so i'm gonna just do the same to the rest of them i'll be back in a second right okay as you can see we fitted all our inserts in all around as i say birch ply it tends to split out a little bit so you have to just put a bit of filler in so i filled the edge there this is going to be stained and lacquered as well to a tiki sort of orangey sort of color so i won't have to worry about that so, all we're going to do now, I mean you can paint these, you can do them any colour you want. So here's our, here's our spike there, that just goes on there, okay screws in, get the four of them on there, there we go. You can put three of those in if you want, but I'm opting for four on these isolation tables. And the last one in. There we go. Now what I'll do is I'll just push that to the. Oh, 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 just take it down like that. I just want to show you it on on up on the right. Up the right way. So there you go. That is a, a fully made isolation table. Now you can you can probably make one of the one. Well, not probably. You can make these for around about thirty pounds. Um, which is relatively cheap for an isolation table really so there we go it sits on there you can see the feet under there once it goes on on your rack so these are going to go on my rack that which i'm making out exactly the same product the birch ply and uh, that'll be coming up soon so i think that's it for this video so just a quick recap on what you need you're going to need some eight mil spikes which which are here uh you're going to need some inserts which are um where have they gone now? Oh, they, which are here. This is your inserts here, a pack of them. I'll put all the information below where you get all this from. 
um, you're going to need a 10mm uh, drill bit, a wood bit, which is over there in the... Um, I'll take it out and show you again. So that is that. And obviously I've wrapped the, the, uh, the, the masking tape round just to, so it indicate that they don't go too far through the wood. Um, you remember this is 24mm birch. This is the best birch, really, the best thickness. You don't really want to go anything less than this. Um, you're going to need uh, an 8mm uh, Allen key, uh, you need a tape measure and a, uh, a sliding bevel. You don't actually need this, you can do it, it's pretty easy. So I think that's it for this video. So it's only a quick, this is a, a, a reasonably priced, very effective isolation table for a CD player, amplifier, anything. You can build it to whatever size you want if you want to put a turntable on there. Um, it will still improve the quality of a turntable or take any vibration away that's coming up into the into the cartridge. Obviously this is nowhere near as good quality as my isolation table that I've made in a previous video but it's still a very good and uh, very effective way of isolating your equipment. So all I've got to say now is thanks for watching another Tweaker Man video. If you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell every time I upload a video and thank you for watching.